I'm going to be doing this demonstration on drawing the human face. I wish I could say that there would be some kind of form or shape that you can draw that would represent the human face, but there's not. It would be a combination of spheres and triangles and cubes. If you understand that and you understand how light and shade falls, which I will demonstrate, then it should be easier. You have a standard shape here. This is a sphere, it's just a circle. And toning it, understanding that if the light source travels from that side in, it would leave a highlight. It would give you the tone of the sphere and the area where light is not falling, that would be in a shaded area, almost like looking at the moon. On the up opposite side, on the surface of the, the table, that's a cast shadow. And the light bounces in and creates a highlight. Let's take a look at constructing a face similar to this. This is just a standard face. Um, and then if it if you want to draw somebody specifically, then do the do the construction and just vary the uniqueness of each of the features. Let's take a look. So I'm going to be using um, Stedler pencils, graphite sticks, and pencil eraser. I love my clutch pencil as well, draft pencil. So going over this, you will see some of the, everything, all the features I utilized this spherical shape. Another quick one here, an oval, and halfway is where the eyes are. If you take half of that, you've got the tip of the nose and the mouth. So you, from the tip of the nose, there's another oval, uh, a sphere. And look at the proportions. You can try it with the, putting a pencil next to your eye. Then you'll see that from the inside of your eye, it aligns with the nose. There and there. The iris lines up with a mouth, which shows that this mouth is a little bit small on the small side. So I can just extend that. Something else to note is that the mouth is almost straight. And if it's not straight, it's slightly slanted down not up like a smiley face. The chin is another oval. I'm going to break this up into its most basic shapes. Here's an oval. The eye, uh, the cheekbones are also ovals. The forehead is flat. That's a rectangle. Then you find this shape. There's an undercut and triangular shapes there. Comes in there, back in again, back out again, back out again. It's almost like having some sunglasses there. Note the large sphere is trimmed in the outer side would be the back of the head. And this is the front of the head, the front of the head, and that's the back of the head. So we see uh, the back of the head and we see the ears starting from there. The ears are made up of these shapes, oval and oval, and that roundness. So then you can just outline that. That gives you the shape, and that's the rim of it. There's a recess 
there, which you can just tone in a bit, and then you will slightly see the opening of the ear, and there is something hollow over there. And now using your pencil eraser to remove the construction lines. The nose is made uh, in this manner. The top of the nose, followed by two spheres. The inner center, imagine triangle, and then trimmed there, which is that part of there, trimmed. It's got a flat area there. Flat, and this will be shaded. There will be a bit of tone on that side, my light source from there. This is what you accentuate, drawing the nostril and the bottom of that nostril. And if I erase the construction lines, then you can see where the shape comes from. Careful not to outline and not to draw strong lines there because every strong line appears to be a cut in the face rather than um, the shape. So that we, we just use light and shade rather. So the, all the openings. Okay, as for the mouth, there's something around us there, followed that way, that way. I, and I do half, half to get the symmetry right. So often people draw one full eye and then copy it on the other side. I don't feel that works well. So to draw the eye in there is a round shape and then you do the other half while you've got the muscle memory. You do the inside, the inside there. Then you do the muscle, muscle. You take that up, take that up. You'll see, I'm just giving you a preview of what we will be doing. And then I'll do both sides like that. And do that half, that half there, there, and then because then at least it looks as if it's in the same form. The neck is thin at the top, going wider at the bottom. It's a tube, but it does have recess here. It does have a protrusion over here and followed by the shoulders. The hair sits on top of that that was a circle so you on the outside you would add this the shape of the hair with its shadows so please look out for that so that's what we're going to be doing so it would turn into that shading just a rough outline. Lights coming from that side. When you have a sphere, there's an oval where the cast shadow is, and light sources from there. It will have a highlight, and it will, because of a light, there will be a tone. Just going to put that down, and like the moon, one half will be in shade. It will be shaded will be in shadow. So I'm just going to indicate that shadow like such. The cast shadow depends on the on the brightness of light. And if the contrast from very bright to very dark, that gives you one, two, three, four tones so far, four different tones which you increase with the pressure of the pencil. So just want to soften that a little bit. The mark that I achieve with the pencil is fine. We want it very smooth, uh, avoid that, you know, that you want it too smooth. It's nice to have the textures in that, rather work it in and avoid rubbing it with your finger too much. Towards the end, you can soften it, you can flatten it up. But notice, 
Okay, the pencil is, is, is getting its own flat surface that works very well now. And once there's some layer down, um, you just keep layering it and release it. So you've got a soft edge. Note that it still looks a little bit flat. Light shines from there onto the surface and bounces back up. And it will therefore lighten up the bottom. Inevitably. Now, there it looks very three dimensional. So, this type of toning we would incorporate here. That sphere equals the same sphere that I did there, and there, and there. The nose works on this principle that you have a cube. It's a cube that it has a highlight and it has a tone on this side. But if a light's coming from this side, it would have the, the color of it, the hue of it, or the tone, central tone, the local tone, we call it, and a surface shadow. There's a surface shadow and the local tone, and there's a reflection underneath, it's also a contrast that will get there. And you will see, when I say the light source is from is above, it's above to the right. It's not behind, because then you're going to get the silhouette. So it would have a cast shadow that looks like that. Okay, that is the cube. So imagine now the triangle, which is triangle cut off and it's got that side view as well which is that side uh, elevation and there's something over there these that shape the top is the highlight local tone surface shadow overall to get the shape I can knock back the areas just to show you how the shape will, what it will look like when we lay down tone. Now I use that, this sphere over the, um, in these areas, the, that area, knock it back, push it back, push it back. The nose on this side, the undercuts, when I talk of the undercuts, it is a, like a canopy or a roof throwing, casting a shadow. And that will be also there. Unless there's a shadow underneath the nose, a casting shadow, cast shadow. And in there, the upper lip is a cast shadow. There's a shadow over here, surface shadow, and there. So this is pointing out the areas that will be in shade. And this side will just have the local tone like that. There will be the local tone there. Avoid the highlights. Because when you, when you put tone down, it knocks it back. Just put a little bit there, and the areas that you didn't turn in will stand out. And the hair will be dark on this side, so avoid um, drawing individual hairs rather groups and not locks necessarily but groups grouping of shapes that form the whole hairdo so with that it's a bit dark now everything but if i lift out the construction lines 
my eraser becomes a tool as well. This is not the way we're going to draw, but just to highlight um, uh, the overall process that we'll be doing. Then you'll be able just to see where this is taking us. Just as an overview, there won't be any stark lines. I did this just to identify the areas for you. So this will give you a clearer picture of um, where we will be going. There's a reflection here. And um, this, the construction lines out of the way, out of the way. And um, I think we're ready to start. So let me just use that one. To start, I just want to highlight the calligraphic um, hand uh, uh, way to hold your, the pencil. Is steering it there and holding it, gripping it with a thumb. But when drawing, you hold back further. And instead of writing this way, we hold the thumb back and work with an open space over around here. An alternative to that is to drop the pencil and to pick it up like this. And then draw in this manner. Using your wrist and your elbow. So I need to start getting the shape of of the face. So it needs to be between there and there. So I, I'm going to start with a central line. That's a center of vision. Now I do this darker so you can see. In a real drawing, I would do it much lighter that I can just see the guidelines. OK, so. To get that. I'm going to start by doing um, a sphere, lots of lines, just glide around and around. That's a top. Uh, this is just an indication, so I, I want to take this away because this is going to be confusing, but I just need to highlight that you you must make sure that everything fits and you don't start at top and then squash it in at the bottom. Halfway of that is there. Now, this is where the eyes would go. This is going to be the eye line. Just going to say so that's the eye line, which is in the middle, and that center there. We can start now with getting your proportions from the beginning. So you've got your sphere halfway, and then half of that there. Half of that. That will be the tip of the nose. This is where the eyes are going to be, and the tip of the nose is going to be there. The mouth will be there, and let's see where this is uh, taking us. By taking that space, that space there, and adding it onto the bottom, there, to there, then create another oval. So in drawing this, I would go like this and go into that. In one con continuous uh, shaping without lifting the pencil. Continue, continue and then round this up, just uh, round that up and that. But before we actually do that, slice the uh, slice off. Some of that and some of the top some at the bottom a little bit just to square it up a little bit so i can now go and work in my areas work around the wrist it's round around it here and then straightening out and then following the contour of this lower sphere and 
rounded there. And that is the shape of the head. So you start from that and now the proportions. Once I've got that, um, it will be useful if I get rid of the confusing construction lines. Just going to leave that center for, for a bit. And um, erase this. So we take away, and it's good for the brain now to, to see the proportion of the remainder. So just work it in there. Okay, and that. And this is where the pencil eraser becomes like another pencil. It just draws paper color. It just brings back the 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 paper. I don't need anything in the foreground there. Uh, on the forehead there. Okay. So with the eyes are in the middle of the head. I did say the eye line would be there, but it appears now a little bit high. I just want to soften that and just make sure based on this that I've got the middle of how confusing it is, huh? I've got the center there and then the proportions and now half of that. And take a look in the mirror. It's maybe advisable just to draw uh, yourself in a mirror and look and measure with your pencil how the way your eyes are, uh, are seated in the head. We always draw it too high. Uh, since childhood, I think we've got the eyes over there. Because it's prominent, we actually put it high up. But it is just so much lower. From now on, look at the face, the people you speak to, and look at the features and the proportions. And I just want to reiterate that when you are drawing, this is an, uh, just a standard ideal face. And when you draw a a person with certain with his 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 or her unique features, you would adjust this, square up the jaw, widen, narrower, longer face, narrower face, etc. So I've got the eye line. Here's the measure. You can fit three eyes, and if you do this uh, between your two eyes, you will see the measure. Just measure that like that between your eyes and you can see where it will fit. So I'm going to start with the measure there. So in other words, if I use that line there and I just draw one eye and next to it another one and another one, you'll see now I'm going to say that lots of times that I do the one side and I don't lift up my pencil and I, and I do the one side and then the other side. I don't I don't copy it across because that's not that's not going to be possible. So now I've got the space. I've got an eye space as the size. Very difficult to speak and draw. more important that you see what I do. And you can see this, there are the two eyes. Then, as I said, let's do the iris. Now we can uh, change the, the size later on again. Why we do it now is one and the other that they centered. So we don't end up with squint eyed or off centered um, irises. The eye has a muscle there and there. Then we take the top of the iris and bring it down, and we'll take the other side and bring it down. And then to the corner, then to the corner there. So 
like I say, I do one half and then I switch to the other half. So I do that and there, then back up and then back up there. So you feel it as you go and you balance it out. It's taking shape. That iris, I see it's a bit too big. This is very thick and flat at the moment. Know that there's a bridge. There's a bit there. I say a bit because it's. I can't tell you the exact measure. That would be when you draw a face that you actually see how much in proportion to to the rest is that space. Then. Um, this shape that I, the boxes that I pull in here, that I add it here, I just want to highlight that over here now, that I need some a, a straight line, a, a straightness there, and I need a flat forehead that's got that shape there. I need um, cheeks there and there and i need the chin which is round as well and i need um where the nose sits there balance it out take a look at where does it sit nicely okay and i must remember from the inside down there's where the other two smaller parts of the nose is they intersect like that right and um the bridge of the nose there's that flat part then the shaded part and the local tone part which is there so it's taking shape, patience, and you keep working it. You'll notice that I, I don't complete anything. I keep tracking it to the other part. So now from there to there, there's a indent there, there's a little shadow there, halfway there, be where the mouth is. And the mouth is slightly slanted downward how far must we go from the center that i'm going to put the the pupils in that eyes that one iris is too big i can sense it now just add that get rid of the distraction for you that might be too dark just get rid of that there 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 From the center there, there. From the center there. And I can see that mouth is pretty wide. But you'll see how, what we're going to do. It must just have this size slightly slanted in. And now this the opening of a mouth, it there's a muscle in the upper lip that's round and then it goes down down it's curved in and the upper lip has two segments there and there now they'll vary so i've got a rounder there um let me do this and bring it out so you can see how the mouth now appears smaller than that so you don't take the construction right to the end and the lower lip is not that accentuated be careful of lines outlines don't outline it too much but i just need to have a guideline um, for my shading i'm just going to do that there is a fold in the mouth and a fold in the mouth so this part what is this that aligns with the eye. This is a little muscle. 
So that will be a highlight, not a tone. So can you see there will be a highlight? There, there's a muscle and there's a muscle. Okay. The, I think I'm starting to create a good shape here. If this was made with clay, um, you'll add on clay and you'll take some clay off. And you'll roll it and add it on and knock back, push back certain areas. But now, first of all, last bit would be the ears. If this person wore glasses, then you can see where it will align. Just want to improve this shape there for you. Okay, so the ear has the height over, it must attach there, but it has a height there, and it's big, ears are big, but I can see now that this is actually going to infringe on the ear, but the shape of the ear would be an oval and a bigger oval. Then there is um, a muscle over there and the rim of the ear is over there. It's followed by a recess and a bit of shadow there. And I can see that this face is maybe tilted forward. So the the ear lobe is in line with the bottom of the nose. So now let's just go to the other side. Get that feel and that feel there. It all intersects and create that shape. Let's just round it off. and um, knock back the shaded areas. OK. We don't draw hair from there out on top of that. That's really going to create a large forehead. So the hairline is much lower. Now, that would be individual features, but Let's let me just do the hairline over there. It's arched like that. Let's go in there. There's some coming out there, and then it joins up there. So I can also just draw it from here. And that's what we're going to see there. Then the rest of the hair you have to add on. There's lots more. So um, this depends on the hairstyle of your subject. And just to give you an idea how much I've added. And just get rid of that. So this construction, remember, clay that we add on and we take off. Now the person just needs neck and eyebrows. Let's do the neck. There is some tweaking to do with this. And then you can see, okay, the shape is nice over there. And it curves in a little bit and there comes the neck. It's thinner on top, so it straightens there much more so i've got to get rid of the initial round that look oval look that i created then it starts and then curves out it's intricate intricate the muscle areas there's a muscle there and a muscle there and there's a protruded area over here. 
So just going to indicate it like that. The muscle is actually round and it comes in here thicker and thin at the top. So and there it goes into the the collarbone, the, the shoulder areas. Now let's do the eyebrows. Eyebrows are thick on the inside and thin on the outside, and it needs to be on that initial eye line there to accentuate the eye line. So it's thick. Don't draw individual hairs, draw the shape. So I'm going to do dark shape and a dark shape on that side just to match it up so I can see what I have on this side and balance it out on the other side. Thinner, thinner, and down. Down. The face is well shaped, but we've got a flat area there. And remember, we we put in, we need to put in cheeks, and we need to push this down. If this was clay, we would need to push that back. We need to push that down. For that, I need to just indicate uh, some shade on the surface there, and some shading there. And as you add the shading, you can see how you're pushing it back. The eyelids have a fold. Let's start both sides, do the one side. You know, don't risk it. If you do it and it doesn't look um, balanced and symmetric, then, you know, it's very frustrating. So do bits to the other side, up, up, across, down, down. There we go. Now we're going to tweak it. The eyes are too big. I can see that. But that's what you're doing now and tweak both sides like I do now. Tweak it, turn it in, but there, the muscles are there. That's fine. There you go. Um, the hair is got it's got shadow there. And so let me just block that in a little bit. And then you can see where this is where we, where it's taking us. There's the construction of the face. And now we add tone. For this, I'd like to use my graphite stick. Um, what I can do at this point is just get rid of the construction lines and some of the annoying measurement lines. And uh, just remember, I do I did this darker. For you to be able to pick it up on the camera. But now these lines need to be softened. I want to keep it there so I can see where I'm going, but um, it must not interfere with the overall look and feel. So let me just get rid of the main areas. And keep the eyes nice and white. Just get rid of that. Okay, that soften that. So the lips does not have the strong outline. So I'm going to now once I'm happy with the shape, just want to soften the lines. Soften the lines and bring the shape back in and that out. Okay. I would usually spend more time on this for the for purposes of the a demonstration. I am going to just move faster and just 
show you the main core of events. So, but just know that um, I would I would be far more meticulous if it is a portrait that I'm sketching. At the end of this video, I will I will show you some of my portfolio drawings. But back to this now. I'm going to look at undercuts. So I can say if there's a canopy that looks like it, there's a shadow underneath that. OK, there's a shadow underneath that. There's a cast shadow. Other objects, highlight, surface tone, local tone, and a cast shadow. So I'm going to start here but just accentuating some of the features. That is the nostril in there. And I only use the line here, not there. Now I can just put, start putting toning in some of the, in the direction of growth, the eyebrows. Um, you'll see that I balance it out to go all over. So I start somewhere and I follow it in another area. And that way, um, I just want to maintain the symmetry. And just pick up certain qualities there. Right. I think the features that I need mostly now uh, would be the eyes and the shading. So I'm going to start just by creating the eyes accent. I'm going to start on top of on top of the iris and work it to the center and bring in the muscle, then finish it to the outside, in the outside, that fold, accentuate it in the middle, then the inside, down, down, you get the angle, and bring it up there, and bring it up there. The eyelashes we'll do later. Just want to accentuate the outside of it we don't see we see the bottom of the iris but not all of the top there we go now knocking back certain areas everything seems to be on one plane at the moment but laying down tone um and i can do it roughly as well so then we just lay down some shading on that side and do remember what we had was this shape following the contours following the contours there and the canopies under cut let me just work it on that do it in semicircles just want to get a, a tone there and a tone there so these are undercuts. And there you can see it's pushing it back. And there it's pushing the side back. I need to add some tone on this side, and that's pushing this part of the, the surface of the face towards the back. There, the inside, and the inside there. This is the darkest tone that you'll find on the face is around here. And that what that does, it makes the bridge of the nose protrude. Now, the undercut of the nose, there's some darker tone there going into that shadow, which is a cast shadow. Going into that, and it's a cast shadow. 
So that's working and it goes from that fold there. And we are so keen on the nose. A lot of people spend a lot of time on the eyes, they get it right, then the nose. Remember again, no outline there. Tone. So we start with a lighter tone. This is just knocking back that area and knocking back that area in equal tone. Then this side. Remember, my light source is there. So there's more tone there. Let's work that in a little bit more. I like the softer, flat area of the graphite stick. The sphere that we looked at. I'm going to use this kind of shading for the eyeballs, for the nose, for the chin, for the cheekbones, the earlobes, everything that is around. Look at that now. So I'm going to knock back this. Everything that's further back and add some shading here like that sphere. Should maybe just put that over there. And the cheekbones, put some tone there. Underneath, so it brings a roundedness in there. Knock that back, the eyeball. Just to accentuate that it is round there and round and knocked back there and this is darker on this side there's some there's a hollowness there and the surface shadow of the nose of that area i'm bringing in here now Just want to bring back the highlight. I'm going to highlight there. Let's highlight there. Then that shadow there. There's a surface shadow there. Knock that back. Remember that muscle there. Let's knock that back. and build up some tone leave the highlight paper color this back there push back the lips as a darker tone, the upper lip is darker than the lower lip. And there's a highlight on the lower lip. So can we just get a flatter surface? Just so you can see I'm going to draw it upside down and that shapes the mouth now uh, you see folds in it you can indicate one or two be careful not too many because it's going to look like chapped lips and there's that fold um surface shadow Cost shadows. That. 
I suggest you draw with this video and um, do some parts, compare. Let's take a look at this. Then, then there is a cost shadow. Let's first of all just knock that back. You can see if I do that, and I bring a darker tone there. It brings the chin forward. There's a on the chin. There is a surface shadow more prominent than what I had. That's that. So now there's a these the shape of the neck. There will be a darker tone there, lighter there, and some surface tone going in there and the shadow area there. When you lay two tones side by side, we need to distinguish which which one is forward and which is back. And because of reflection, reflection of the light that bounces into the shadow, that's what I'm going to lift out here. Look at that area. It does look on the same plane. But if I go now and remove some of the tone, it sits nicely enough. Okay, and then you can just tidy up. So it's nice. There's so it's sharper, but you know, can you see that all the outlines are actually incorporated into the tone? So can tidy that up, shape, shape this nicely. Okay, this year will be in. Let me just get the shape there. The shape there. The year goes that that way. There's a cross shadow. Cross shadow. This whole year will be in in shade. So I'm just going to turn that in. And this will be lighter. So lift out the highlights. Start the highlights. Highlights of the upper lid there. And um, This muscle talked about. Okay. There's a highlight there, a highlight there. There's a highlight here, and in the top of the nose. Right. Um, going to come to the eyes in the end. Now here. Click in some hair. I want to give this guy maybe a little bit of a spiky look. There. So this is the shaded area. Then start bringing strands like in, like it, but not individual ones, groups. Group it. And here where it bundles. It'll be darker and some highlights in that tone. So knock back positive and negative shape. See. So to accentuate that, knock back the, the head and don't add to the hair necessarily. So I've got my darker tones on the hair uh, main structures. I want to just bring that in there as well. Start maybe with that. Flick it in. So 
popped up. There's a highlight here. More light. Uh, a lighter tone in the hair in the front. And then put back some definition. And um, face forehead gets accentuated there. Right. Just lay down a bit of tone. There's a highlight on the hair here in front and a silhouette in the back against the background. So that is beginning to take shape. Let's go to the eyes. I just want to do this. Oh, I forget. Do that nicely. Okay. And beat it similarly on the other side. Okay. The eyes itself. I'm going to work around this concept. The eye is there. That's the pupil. This is a right, the eye on the right hand side. Here's a muscle. It goes up. So the eyelashes start from there and flick it out. And if it's male, don't do the bottom. If it's female, you only do bits there. Only on one one half. Then that's the muscle over there. And it's got a fold there. Right. The, you see the bottom of it, but not the top. There's a shadow, cast shadow of the eye. But there's also, if a highlight is over there, there's a highlight and a window shadow. So I'm going to leave this white. and shade around that shape. So I'm going to take that. And that's very dark. The pupil. Then the top must be in shade. But the rest of the eyes also in shade at the top. So the white will just be lighter. I'm going to do that, and there's some tone on the on the muscle, and there's a little bit of surface shadow underneath, and then the rest of the eye can be toned in. Say I'm doing brown eyes, then this is what it would look like. Much lighter if you want to do if you do blue eyes or green eyes. Etc. There we go. A bit of texture here on the muscles. You just indicate some of it. Spread it out. So that's going to be the brightest. And this is lighter. Just put a bit of tone over that. And that's how you do the eye. I'm going to do it over there now. I use my 4B, 6B as well, my 4B, which is a beautiful pencil. I'm going to do the highlight. And yeah, this is shadow now. Just draw the pupils 
So for that, I'm going to use my 6B. That's a darkest pencil. Careful not to make the pupils too too large. I'm going to go back, get back to my 4B, the flat surface, drop down some tone on top, and on top there. And the bottom, there at the bottom. Remember this little shadow there? I was going to turn that in and turn that in there just to create that canopy shadow, the undercuts. And finally, just the eyelashes. Let me use the 6B and go to that. Click out. Not too many in the direction that it grows. And we've got the basic idea of the of your hair. You can now put accents, lines, and and shadows into that, and work it a little bit. But essentially, this is how you would draw your face. I'm going to tweak a little bit. Tweak, tweak, tweak just as I feel fit here. You know, just to try and get more volume on the shadow areas. And now, would be, it's permissible to fade in, to rub in the tones. Just be careful, it makes it a little bit muddy. Um, if you rub too hard, you can't take it out again. Um, if you lay down too much tone, you can uh, use your putty eraser and just roll it over some areas. So, and to get rid of the, or just to tidy it up, just to charge it up, just like press stick, just knead it a bit, and lift, roll, rub the highlights. This is not as harsh as a pencil or as press stick. If you don't have but the eraser press stick will do it, but be careful. And press stick has a bit of an oiliness in it that the putty eraser does not have. Much gentler, more gentle. So I'm bringing back some softer tones by just lifting some of the, the excess. In the, so in the areas that I want um, a bit more gentle. So looking at that, there's only one last thing that I would do for now, and that is, I'll just clean that out, and that is just to bring some highlights into the hair in the direction of the growth.
and tidy up. So once I've tidied that up, I can use positive and negative shapes with my graphite stick. Lights coming from that side. Um, this will be slight silhouette against the background. And on this side, um, it will be a harder edge. So just to create light and shade, I can actually just go now to the background and just add some tone. Then I can see what I need just to accentuate it. Start from there and just add background, background. Get out, cross hatch, add texture. And on this side, just to balance out the tone, I'd say just accentuate that. And here, keep the silhouette just a little bit that side. But keep the form to match that side. This has just got to be in the same frame, so you got, have to match up your tone. There you guys. Please feel free to leave a comment. And we'd like to see some of your drawings. So I wish you well on how to draw the face. I hope this helped you. Artists, I hope that this video will assist you and help you to find joy enjoying the human face. Happy drawing. Goodbye.